Jamaicans at home and abroad are still feeling the spirit of independence. But what is the state of the nation at 60? Joining us now to discuss this is leader of the opposition, Mark Golding. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Morning, Thank sir. Thank you for having me. Morning. Morning, morning sir. Morning, Jamaica. I, I, I heard what uh, Daly just said, but uh, let, let's start with that letter that you got from Member of Parliament, Lisa Hannah. Your thoughts on that, and oh. we can move on, sir. Well, Lisa's made a personal decision. Um, I support her decision. I think it has been a while coming. I was aware of some of the issues that uh, she has been facing. And she and I have a great relationship. I'm very happy that she will remain as our spokesperson for foreign affairs and foreign trade. We work well together on those issues. And she's an important member of the party. But representational politics isn't for everybody. And she's done three terms. This is her fourth term. So she's done a tremendous level of service over the years. And you know, I wish her very well in whatever is going to replace that aspect of her life. After the next election, she's still the MP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jamaica at 60, what would you say are some of the island's most significant accomplishments so far? Well, we've developed a culture over centuries which has had a huge impact on the world. Uh, the manifestations of culture, be it our music, our cuisine, our language, and so much more has endeared us to the world. Our prowess in sports is really unsurpassed in sprinting. For an island of our size, it is phenomenal. Those are some of the very positive things that we've achieved. We have a political system that has avoided uh, coups and instability and has preserved the rights of the people under our constitutional rule of law. That's another positive thing. On the other hand, we have tremendous problems in the country. We have um, long-standing and apparently worsening problem of violence and violent crime which is sapping the will of the country and I think everybody is anxious more than anxious desperate to see a solution to that and it has to be a solution that operates within our constitutional framework and it has to be a solution that is sustainable apart from that the economy hasn't performed as well as we would have liked uh, we, when we went through the period 2012 to 2016 and the tremendous sacrifices of that IMF program and the successes of it, we had anticipated a period of strong economic growth that would come out of that, which we really haven't seen. But the overall structure of our public finances is sound and the platform remains. We just have to solve some of the issues that are holding us back in terms of our national productivity and our ability to move forward. Mm. You, you, you said long-standing um, mm -hmm. in, in a very serious way. I'm, I'm an older fella, and I've said this on here many times, that I can remember police officers without guns. Yeah, um, I, wow. could, I could remember me being more concerned that my mom would hear that I did something on the road, that a policeman was going to hurt me or anything like mm -hmm. that. Where, when did we get to where we are, and why, wow. sir? Hmm. <sighs> I think we've had a some issues with how we handle, handle anger and um, we've had a propensity for some amount of violence for many times, all the, for, for a long time, although the society as a whole wasn't crime ridden, as you've mentioned, I think, it, you know, we were, the politics has part of the blame. As we know that, uh, and this predates um, even independence. There was a violent aspect to our politics from almost day one, which had not many people appreciate. But um, as the Cold War era unfolded, and the, the ways in which politics was being conducted uh, changed, I think that led to uh, a problem with with guns becoming a feature of communities which were highly politicized. And then, after the influence of politicians through the dispersing and distribution of spoils waned and gangsters emerged who were tied into the international dr drugs trade and now scamming. The control of those communities shifted and we are now have a situation where we have embedded an embedded culture of violence. We have a proliferation of guns in certain communities and we have a problem of corruption, quite frankly, within the society, including the police force. And it's a very difficult situation to manage, but it requires tremendous will and commitment and a fixity of purpose and a good strategy. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're saying this year is reigniting a nation for greatness. Yes. And you've mentioned the shortcomings, you know, mm -hmm. the crime, mm -hmm. um, the economic challenges. How do we reignite? a society that's, that's struggling under those issues? 
I think we have to focus on the positives and why it is that we are able to achieve greatness in the areas that we have done and then uh, apply some of those principles to those areas where we're weak. And, you know, we have to invest in our people. We have to realize that the, the true potential of uh, the Jamaican people. And unfortunately, we have a society where many people feel alienated. It's a very unequal society. And we don't, I think, spend sufficient resources in developing our human capital. So our school system, uh, especially at the earlier ages, is underfunded. And that leads to a result that we have children passing through the education system without the basics. And that creates all sorts of problems down the line because they eventually leave school with nothing to show for it mm -hmm. and are very tempted to go into other ways of making a living and achieving their own personal status, which is not in the best interest of the society as a whole. So the solutions are around changing those things that can have a big impact. I'm a strong believer in early childhood development, investing in primary education as well, fixing that early period so we don't have this pipeline which has gone wrong, but rather we have a pipeline of well-adjusted and uh, educated children who can then take on secondary school, make the most of it, and we can have a productive society going forward. I think that's one of the important things we need to do, which ha isn't really being done presently. Mm -hmm. yep. Sir, uh, Daly mm -hmm. said at the, the top, you're the leader of the opposition. I think yes. everyone knows that by now. Mm -hmm. What would the PNP need to do um, to ensure that uh, the, probably in the next couple of years you sit there uh, you're, as prime minister? What, what do you need to do to get there, sir? We have been focused on some internal healing. We went through a period of 15 years where we had a, um, a number of leadership contests, each one of which left in its wake some turbulence, which... I have uh, since becoming the president of the party in November 2020. I've focused on trying to sort that out. I think we've made tremendous strides, especially in the last few months, and the party's coming together nicely. Uh, and we have also now received our report from Professor Tony Bogues, really a reappraisal of our philosophy in the 21st century. And it's a well-constructed document. The NEC, which met a couple of weeks ago, uh, received it and was very energized by it. And it will provide a, a framework that we can now develop our specific policies against to ensure that we're true to our roots as a progressive party of the democratic left, which is focused on building the country, ensuring that everybody is included and building a fair and equitable society for all. So I'm very optimistic that the Jamaican people st um, will see that we're a, a party that believes in integrity in public life and is very focused on trying to build the kind of society that everybody can be part so, of. Our colleagues in the newsroom just sent us a, 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 a question that they want to ask you, sir, and the question is the unity with the party has been speaking about, is it real or farce or a farce? And I think they're mm -hmm. suggesting that would be based on the, the, the resignation letter that you got yesterday. Yeah, I don't think the resignation has anything to do with unity, quite frankly. The resignation has to do with Lisa's own issues and where she wants to go with her life. Uh, the, the, uni the unity that we've been building, I think, is real. And I think that we have um, all committed ourselves to making it stronger. And I think if you observe some of the things that are going on in the party, you will see that everybody's coming together and is creating a positive energy that we're all enjoying. So the party as a whole is on, a, is on, a, on the up and up. And I look forward to us um, rolling at that positive momentum going forward so that more Jamaica can see that we're ready to be given the responsibility of, of running the country again. Mm -hmm. Why should Jamaica give you that responsibility? I think they need, Jamaica needs to have a government that is focused on the real issues confronting the country and less on PR and hype. I think that this government is failing in some critical respects, the crime and violence being a major one, but the whole question of the development of our people and our human resources is another, and their track record when it comes to integrity in public life and the use of public resources is extremely poor. And that is undermining the confidence of the population in our political system and our democracy. These are very important issues and good reasons why we need a change of government. Mm -hmm. yep. I can't remember the percentage, uh, uh, sir, of the, 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 the last national uh, um, election, yes. but a lot of us did not vote. Yes. What does that say to the electorate first and to the, the, the people who we should be putting in power? What does that say? Well, it was called during the COVID crisis, and I think that was partly uh, why the numbers were low, but that's not the whole story. 
the truth is that people are dis disgruntled and I think a bit cynical about what politics and the political class can deliver for the country. And that's partly because of the corruption that has been going on and the way in which uh, people are perceived as going into politics just to scrape and get for themselves what they can. And I think we need to change that by cleaning up our act and being more serious and focused on the real issues facing the people. And I think if we can build a national movement around tackling those problems in a way that gets everybody engaged, moving in the same direction, I think people will once again embrace the tremendous opportunities that politics does present as a vehicle of change. Because at the end of the day, there are many ways to serve the country. But the one that can change the system itself, which has access to the making of laws, uh, is, is, is a political system, which is really why I'm in it, because I believe that's where really, you can have the biggest impact, positive or unfortunately negative. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's 60, yes. and that's a, a whole year. Yes. And I feel that every time we get to independence, Jamaicans uh, try to see some kind of signal as to, to, to what's going to be better for us, what's going to be different, what is going to help us to enjoy this independence that we have. Mm -hmm. um, f what's your vision? Sir? I think we're now at the time where we need to complete the circle of independence because although we achieved political independence in 1962, we did so within the con a context of a keeping certain colonial structures still in place. In particular, our head of state, who is not a Jamaican, has never lived here. I think we need to change that and become a republic within the Commonwealth. Uh, I think there's consensus as to the steps that need to be taken to achieve that. And we need to get on with it, quite frankly. And I'm very disappointed with the delays in moving that process forward. Also, our final court of appeal, we have established a Caribbean court of justice. Jamaica was a major contributor to the design of it to ensure that it's independent of political interference and it has the highest quality judges available and it's accessible to our people. We funded our share of the court and we should be using the court as our final court of appeal. That needs to take place as well. Those are sort of things that I think could signal that Jamaica has matured in, in its 60th year and be some landmark achievements that we could all come to get, uh, coalesce around and get done. And I, those are, that's what I would like to see happen. Final question from mm -hmm. me, sir. Uh, I, speaking of being a republic, I kind of know we can just call England and say goodbye. Mm -hmm. But uh, forgive my ignorance, mm -hmm. but why is it taking so long? And, and what are the steps that, 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 you know, that need to be taken? The steps that need to be taken under our constitution, which is a bit different to Barbados, for example, we require legislation that would be passed by a two-thirds majority of both houses, which means essentially two major parties have to agree on it. And then it has to go to the people for a vote on a referendum. I believe personally... It has to go to the it people? It has to go has to, to that issue. That issue has to, because it's a deeply entrenched provision in the Constitution. That's the only way you can change it. Okay. We have not had a referendum since 1961. And that, that history shows that the person who called that referendum was Norman Washington Manley, ended up not being successful. That was on the issue of federation. And I think that the legacy of that has um, made governments somewhat cautious about going down the route of a referendum. But we need to put that behind us and come together and get it done. Yeah. I did say final question, but how confident are you that we're going to be back up where we need to be um, sooner than later? Back up in what respect? In, in the way we live, the, how we oh. are, are in everything, and yeah. what we do in our economy, and yeah. in everything. I think we have a lot has been achieved in creating the right economic structures and environment to ensure that we don't um, go down some of the pathways of the past that created a lot of um, unmanageable debt and so on. I think that we have what we are lacking now is a. I think a collective political and will, a national will to come together and solve some of the major problems. And if we can get that happening, I think the, the future will be very bright for Jamaica because we have such tremendous talent. Our people are so brilliant and capable, uh, but we just need to manage our affairs better. And so, some of that does require consensus and we need to be more real in how we approach the building of consensus. There's a lip service paid to it, but when the rubber hits the road, you see it's not real. We yeah. need to be really consistent around that. Thanks for coming, sir. Thank you for having Great me. Great to see you, sir. Yeah. And blessings to you and your family. Thank you. Same to you and yours. He's the leader of the opposition, mm -hmm. Mr. Mark Bowden.